Today, we're taking our first look at the new Creality K1. So I've obviously taken the printer out of the box and I've removed the easily accessible packaging materials in here. Um, one of those sets of foam had a very large box that contained all this. This was sitting on top and there's still one piece of foam in here that we're gonna remove in just a second. But we'll take a look at what we have here. In this bag, we have the lid for the machine, like a plastic lid. And there's also the stickers and instruction manual, which I'm gonna take a couple minutes to read through. So we've also removed the um, protective film from all of the glass panels on the side here. First look at this, it obviously looks a lot like a bamboo P1P. And this is Creality's answer to that. So their K1 is supposed to be kind of the direct competitor in their eyes. So we're gonna take a look and you know, you'll hear lots of comparisons between the two during, during this video, I'm sure. But let's finish looking at the uh, parts that came in the, in the box here. So we've of course got flush cutters, We've got wrenches, a plastic scraper, um, a nozzle unclogging tool, a uh, USB stick, it looks like it's 16 gigs, and then a bunch of other assembly tools, Allen keys, a wrench for changing nozzles, screwdriver, etc. And then in the larger box that's already been discarded, there were these rubber feet, they look like feet, um, spool holder, power cord, and a screen. So the screen is obviously going to connect right up there to that connector. Let's take this out. The screen has protective film on the front here, and it even warns you, uh, before applying power, make sure that the voltage is selected correctly on your machine. So we're going to be uh, 115 volts here. So let's just jump right in and install this screen. So this connector is obviously gonna plug in here, and these two little fingers are going to slide into those slots. So it's going to go like this and slide down. So let's just try to connect to this. There's not much slack, so just be careful. Okay, before we go any further, we are gonna remove this packaging material here. So just slide the extruder forward slowly, and then you should be able to kind of wiggle this out. So the next steps, it says to install what they call the material barrel or the filament holder, spool holder. Um, so this just goes in here should be kind of like a quarter turn. There you go. Uh, and it says to connect and power on the printer. Now, as we saw that warning about the voltage, the power supply voltage is set through this tiny little window here. And sticking a flashlight in there, I can see that it's currently set to 230 volts. For us, that's not a big problem. It just won't turn on. Um, and so that's a safe way to kind of ship the machine if you're gonna have it shipped in one configuration for, for all global regions. Reach in there with like a small Allen key or something and flick it over to the 115 volts. So now with it plugged in um, and turned on, uh, it says to load the filament. So Creality has included one of these small spools of what they call their hyper PLA. So it's their high speed PLA, which makes sense. This is intended to be a high speed printer. It says to load it, feeding it through the Bowden tube uh, until it can't be pushed any further. So it's gonna be right inside the, the hot end there, uh, right near the drive gear. As per usual, uh, we're gonna cut off any mangled end of the filament and cut it on a 45 degree angle or so, like that, hopefully you can see that. Slide the spool on here like this so that it's rotating in a direction that makes sense so that the path goes right up through the filament runout sensor. And we can see the light indicate that it's detected that there's filament there and now we're up in here. And just keep pushing. And you'll see it enter the top of the hot end and then it stops. And just for fun, I'm going to install this on the top. There's a little notch cut out there on the backside, and that's to allow the Bowden tube here to enter the machine. And then it just sits in a little recessed uh, ledge there. Okay, so on the screen, we're supposed to choose our language and hit next. And then it's gonna guide us to remove the screws. Now there are these little yellow arrow stickers where there are screws that we need to remove, um, but it also shows you here. So there's A, B, and C. Um, and so we're gonna remove all three of those using our Allen key. And once I've removed them, you can also get rid of those stickers. All right, so now that we've got those three screws and their stickers removed, we'll hit OK. Welcome, hit OK again. 
All right, so now we can connect to the network. Let's set up a, a hotspot here. So in the list, I've set up printer Wi-Fi. We'll select that. We'll type in the password to connect to printer Wi-Fi. Okay, so I've typed in my password. I hit the check mark and I'm back at this screen. I'm gonna hit next. I'm not sure why it went back to that screen. I would have expected it to continue, but we'll see if this worked. We are UTC minus five. Next. We can use the Creality Cloud app to scan this barcode or the QR code and attach it to our account. So in the Creality Cloud app, I'm gonna click this little scanner icon. I'm gonna say, go ahead. And then I will scan that QR code. There we go. And now this device shows my Creality Cloud account. I can give it a, a title. I'll just call it the K1 and I'll hit next. And then self-inspection, place the printing platform. Okay, so the printing platform I've taken off here. I'll take off the protective film and place it back on. And there's two little screws here to help you align the platform to the, to the magnetic sheet. And we'll hit start detection. So now it's about to do an input shaping check. Since it's raised in the build platform, we can remove this last piece of foam here. So this is where I expect that it's going to do a rapid sequence of movements to tune out any of the resonant frequencies. That's what Input Shaper does. So we should see the um, hot end jiggle back and forth, left to right, front to back. Um, and you may also see the, uh, the bed jiggle a little bit, which we saw at the bottom as well. So Input Shaping does take a little while. After a few minutes here, you'll start to hear it ramp up. You can feel, you know, you shouldn't really touch the machine, but you could feel the whole machine kind of vibrating. You'll also notice that at certain frequencies, you'll hear the rest of the machine shake a lot more violently. And those are those frequencies that we're really trying to tune out where that, that speed of movement causes the mach whole machine to kind of oscillate or vibrate like that. So after patiently waiting, it's done all of its testing. It finished with the auto leveling test and now it says self-testing completed. So we'll hit okay. And we can actually see a graph here of what looks like the hot end temperature that's dropping there. Um, and we'll, we'll go through the menu options. We've got the hot end at 104 degrees and the heated bed is at 47 right now. And here we can turn the light on or off. I'll just leave it on. All right, let's take a look at the screen. So we've already played with the, uh, the light there. We can turn on the fan. We have the model fan, which is the fan on the hot end or the normal part cooling fan. The auxiliary fan here, which is a much larger fan. And this blows air across the entire build surface here to really help with cooling because with the hot end moving so fast, that hot end cooling fan doesn't have much time to cool the filament as it's, as it's coming out. So this allows the filament all across the build plate to be cooled uh, a little more effectively. And then the back fan is actually back here. So it's like a rear exhaust fan. So still within the settings menu, you can see at the top, we were under the cooling sub menu. So there's an extrude retract menu. Um, obviously you can set the uh, hot end temperature before you extrude or, uh, or retract the filament. Um, Oh, it even says the temperature will automatically be set before you can do extrude or retract, so that's nice. And then under axis movement slash temp, it's got the temps here, and we can set the bed temp or the hot end temp. So there's also the chamber temp. Now this is just a reading. There is no active chamber heater, so when I tap on that, there's not gonna be a, a number pad to, to set a temperature there, but it's just letting me know what the ambient temperature is in there. And uh, you can turn the motors off so that you could freely move things around by hand if you wanted to. Um, of course, we can move in all the directions and home the X and Y. Um, we can home the Z and move the Z up and down in these increments at the top. If we move down to the next menu here, so we've got a couple different options. There's local, which is like the, uh, the on printer memory, if you will. Um, we have USB drive, which is, you know, this guy that they included here. Um, and then uh, you've got a history of prints. So we don't have any history right now. Uh, we don't have a USB drive in right now. So local, it looks like we have a cat, another little test bar thing, uh, first layer testing. So it's gonna do a large square and then the classic Benchy here. Um, it's kind of neat that even shows you, um, I think they've put this in the title here, that this Benchy is gonna print in 17 minutes. Even though the calculation here says 15 minutes. So that's interesting, that there's a discrepancy there. But in that small text at the bottom, you can see the estimated time for completion for each of those prints. So over on the system menu here, at the top we have screen, which just shows plus and minus. I think that's gonna be brightness. Uh, 
looks like it is. Yeah. Um, the screen time off, so timeout, three minutes, five minutes, or none, Let's stay on. Our language, which we selected earlier. Under device self-test, so in here, this is where you're going to be able to test the auto leveling, but you'll also be able to do input shaping as well, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, further down, we've got setting your time zone, binding the creality. So this is where you scan the QR code in the app, which we did earlier. Uh, export log, don't know what that's about. Let's see, not even an option there. Oh, export the logs from the printer to a USB stick. Um, the version of the printer right now, and if I tap on that, it's probably going to do an update check. Uh, it says we're currently on the latest version, so that's a good sign. Um, we could reset, which we're not going to do. And under about, there's going to be more machine information here. So we are ready to do our test prints. There's a few things I want to address just before we go away and do that. Number one, these little feet here. Um, it looks like the original feet that are attached here will just sit in these little pockets. There was no mention of this in what I called the manual, but it's just the quick installation guide. The manual is online. Um, you can go to their website or scan the QR code on there to get there. Um, but if you are going to install these, you should do the input shaper tuning with these installed. Since we've already done the input shaper tuning as it sits here, we're going to use it as it sits here. These may reduce the amount of vibrations transferred into your table or your work surface um, if noise is a concern. Um, in our case, we're just going to leave those off. But again, if you swap them on or off, just make sure you redo the input shaper. Um, another thing to address, we're printing PLA here. With something like ABS, having a, a totally enclosed printer is like very advantageous. You want to have warm ambient temperatures in there to reduce the amount of warping or splitting that might happen with something like ABS. But with PLA, we don't have warping and splitting issues. And actually, in some cases, we can have a hard time cooling it fast enough, which is why we might need that auxiliary fan. In the manual, they say if your room temperature is above 30 degrees that you should have this off if you're printing PLA. I generally, when printing PLA, would have it off. You can feel free to leave it on, but just know that if you're having drooping overhangs or having difficulty, say, detaching support material because they're too tightly bonded to the, uh, to the actual uh, print itself, uh, that you might be running into a lack of cooling, and that could be as a result of warm ambient air temperatures in there, right? So take this off if that's the case. Um, but on the other hand, it looks kind of slick, and it keeps a little bit of the noise down, and it keeps any of the dust or debris or anything like that, cat hair or whatever, from falling into your printer. So um, with that said, uh, I'm just heating up the nozzle right now, which heats extremely fast. Um, just to make sure that the filament is feeding through the nozzle and squirting out before I hit print on a, on a new print. You know, we did feed the filament all the way until it hit kind of the drive gear mechanism, but we're just going to go to that extrude menu and extrude a little bit. Okay, so I used the extrude menu, um, got it heated up to 200, and it extruded a, a preset amount of filament. You don't really get to choose. Um, but one thing that I should mention is on the hot end here, there's a little switch. And there's two symbols. One shows like unlocked and one shows locked. It was shipped in the unlocked position. So normally on an extruder, you know, we have a little lever that will open the drive gears so we can feed in filament or, or yank it out and then close the drive gear so they're gripping the filament. Well, that would be locked and unlocked, right? So it's shipped in an unlocked state so that we could slide the filament in as far as it goes. And then we would click this to lock so that the drive gears are grabbing the filament. So if you do go to the extrude menu and the filament is not getting pulled in the back, you know, you can wiggle this and make sure you're putting a little pressure at the back, but also make sure that that's in the locked position or it's never going to feed in. So now it's melted and extruded a little gob of filament on the bed there. Um, so I know everything's ready to go. The nozzle's primed and now we can go ahead and do our test prints. So we have our three factory slice test prints here that we printed using the uh, PLA that came with the printer, the high-speed PLA. Um, so we'll start with maybe this guy. This is a high-speed, I believe it was meant to max out the speed of the printer print. It's just a single wall um, with rapidly kind of changing directions like this. Um, and it was printed in about seven minutes. And uh, there's nothing to speak of here. It's absolutely flawless. Um, and even in these rapid changes here, you didn't see any kind of 
resonant frequencies or ghosting or anything like that. They're kind of curved, so you know it's not a sharp 90 degree change, which is really the biggest test of that, but we're gonna take a look at that in another print here. We also have the cat. Now this cat was printed in about one hour and 22 minutes or so. Um, again, absolutely flawless. It's one of those articulating print in place models, which is kind of fun. Um, and this is a better test. Uh, obviously it's printed flat and we have these kind of 90 degree direction changes on each of the little segments here. Um, and looking at them in all of the different light, there's no ghosting. There's a tiny bit of bulging at some of the corners. Um, so there could be some improvements there and that can be slicing related as well. But from a, a ghosting perspective, which is a mechanical issue, um, none of these have ghosting except for maybe a little bit on this last one here. Um, but I really have to strain to, to see if that's actually there or not. So in my opinion, this is perfect. And then we have a Benchy and he's still got a little bit of his brim attached here. Um, he was printed in about 17 minutes and it is absolutely flawless. There's no stringing, there's no sags on any of these arches. Um, you can, you know, tell that there's supposed to be letters in the back, but being that it's white, it's also super hard to read, but uh, you know, that never turns out perfect with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and you can still read the text on the bottom. Um, nothing to complain about here, a great specimen. So a couple times in this video, I believe I mentioned the Bamboo P1P, and this is obviously Creality's answer to the Bamboo P1P. They're both clipper-based, you know, enclosed or enclosure-ready high-speed printers. Stay tuned, in the very near future, we're going to have a head-to-head -head with the K1 and the P1P. We're not only gonna compare physical differences between the machines themselves, but we're gonna do a print-off of a bunch of different prints at max speeds and see what quality differences in the resulting prints that we can find between the two printers. Hopefully you found that useful. Remember, like and subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified when we upload more videos like that comparison. Thanks for watching.